welcome to Own a Disown. And in this episode, we're looking at a fantastic lightweight gaming computer by Asus. It's the Asus GL502VS-DB71. It is uh, powered by the uh, GTX 1070, the all, all new Rage uh, Pascal GPU. And I say, how often can you hold one of these with one hand? So let's take a look at it now. Thank you. So we have started to see GTX 10 series graphics cards within notebooks, which is amazing. These deliver nearly on par performance to the desktop graphics cards within 10%. Uh, do CUDA core counters uh, being increased to offset a slower core clock? Um, but it's a very exciting time to have a, a new notebook. So this Asus laptop has formidable specs. It has uh, 16 gigabytes of uh, high-speed DDR4 2133 MHz RAM, expandable up to 32 gigs, so there's two sticks possible there. It has a 256 gigabyte SSD. It's a PVMe PCI Express M.2 drive, so that is fast with a one terabyte mechanical drive for storage. A uh, 15.6 non-gloss display, 1080p, it's an IPS panel, uh, and most importantly, it has the GTX 1070 GPU with 8 gigabyte of uh, VRAM. Um, it's certainly uh, got lots of ports with HDMI 2.0. Four USB ports, a mini display port, a gigabit Ethernet port, and its footprint is fairly small, um, fairly thin, about uh, about one inch or so thick, and it weighs around about six pounds. So it is uh, it's ideal for you road warriors. It comes with an excellent keyboard with 1.6 millimeters of travel, with uh, bright red uh, backlighting. The uh, AWSD keys are brightly coloured orange, so you can't miss those. And the trackpad is large and very good tracking indeed. The uh, back panel, as you can see, is uh, uh, glows, glows red uh, with the uh, Republic of Gamers emblem. And putting it on the scales, it weighed around about six pounds. Looking at the footprint of it, comparing it to the Alienware 15, um, it is slightly larger uh, with a uh, thickness of just over one inch. All right, so looking at the, uh, the ports, and we have the, uh, the power connector, we have um, the uh, giga gigabit Ethernet port there with a, a spring-loaded strap, which I don't really see what the point of that is for, but uh, you know, it's there. Um, I suppose it's a stop it coming out, but uh, and then we've got the uh, display port 1.2, um, HDMI 2.0, um, so uh, that is uh, good for um, 60 frames per second at 4K. And uh, we've got a, uh, a USB 3 port and a, uh, a USB 3.1 Type-C Gen 2 connector there for up to 10 gigabits per second. So that's very nice. No Thunderport 3 here. Um, so uh, no connecting to an external graphics uh, card, which I think is available on the 17-inch model. Looking around the back here, we've got uh, some uh, nice red um vents here to expel the air maintaining the good old uh, theme going on there and uh, we have here the um some intake at the back as well as at the sides some intake uh, vents at the side there so that, that's good some good some good airflow going through there and uh, the good old trademark zingy orange feet nice big rubber feet to keep it nice and stable which i do like there's about uh, a series of about 10 screws to take off to, to remove the back. Um, on the other side, we have um, a combo headphone microphone jack. So that's nice just to, to have the one socket there. And uh, two high-speed uh, USB 3 ports here, an SD card reader, and a Kensington lock. So I think that's uh, it's fair. It's fairly... Uh, you know, robust for connections. And uh, at the front here, you've got uh, some LEDs to show you uh, the uh, connection status with the hard drive and the uh, power and so forth. The case lid is uh, made out of uh, brushed aluminum, which is nice. Gives a, a fairly premium feel to it. Um, the rest of the construction is plastic. Um, it's a huge fingerprint uh, 
magnet i'm not sure whether the, the camera picks it up but it's uh, basically uh, if you have greasy fingers at all in any form you're going to leave uh, smudges on here including the, the touchpad that uh, becomes shiny straight away and uh, looking around the, the the back the back is plastic which just helps make it makes it lightweight also the benefit of it though is it doesn't uh, conduct heat uh, as as readily um so it should be cooler on your lap as well as you can see the uh, keyboard is uh, is red backlit it um uh, can be adjusted in brightness uh, touch of a button lowering it down and uh, bringing it uh, back up so that is nice there's only one color that's uh, red you got to like red as you can see the keyboard is uh, is nicely laid out chiclet style keyboard with uh, 1.6 millimeter of uh, travel and uh, the, the typing experience is nice um, initially I felt it was a little bit cramped but you get used to it there is a, a number pad here on the right so that is uh, that is handy and uh, the power button is located the top right hand corner which is good because you know sometimes you can accidentally press it or spend half your time trying to find out where it is um, so uh, that's it that is nice and it, there's a little light on it there telling you that it's uh, it's activated the speakers the two watt speakers are located here they're 18 millimeter speakers and uh, they're set up so that the sound doesn't interfere with the microphone supposedly um, I'll show you a bit of an audio on that, but uh, I would, would prefer if they were facing outwards like this. The volume is, is is okay; it's quite decent, but most of the sound just goes up upwards. If it was coming towards you, that would be better. Um, the screen, um, full HD, nineteen twenty by ten eighty p. It's a G Sync panel, which is very nice. Um, I think it's three hundred twenty one nits of brightness, and it's uh, is very nice. Um, nice, nice, clear. The, the, the bezels are. Perhaps a little large in this day and age. That's what they are, um, but uh, it's 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 fine. Uh, the uh, the webcam is a 720p webcam. That's nice and clear. The touchpad I find is is, is nice. It uh, scrolls around. You know, it's smooth and it moves around nicely. The uh, there's no separate buttons for left click and right click, but you know it's fairly uh, it's a fairly firm click. You're not going to accidentally click it, which is which is great. So I wanted to give you an idea of uh, what the screen is like uh, outside. I'm sitting outside here. The uh, screen is certainly clear. There's no reflections. Um, the viewing angles are good. I mean, particularly, you know, if you're in the, if you're in a dark environment, I mean, there's going to be no no problem at all. I'm outside here, so there's going to be reflections. But uh, you know, in in a, in a dark environment. There's, uh, it's clear regardless, and this is at full screen brightness. Um, so, if in case you want to do any gaming outside, um, let's reduce the brightness to 25%. It's still clear outside. So, and unless you're on a, on a very bright sunny day, now that's pointed directly at the sun, and I think even at full brightness you still get the glare. But it's a pretty non-glossy display though which I think is uh, is fantastic. So if you wanted to do some work and read some text, for instance, you know, it's uh, it's fine. This is a 25% brightness. So it's a great screen. It can also be, uh, be closed and uh, opened up. Opened up with one, one finger fairly easily. Well, fairly easily, I should say. So that's perfect. In terms of uh, screen flex, it's rigid. I'd say that's a fairly rigid screen. The keyboard, that's firm as well. There's very little give in the keyboard, which I like. Very solid. Taking the back off is very easy using uh, a Phillips screwdriver for 10 screws. Remove those and then you can use a thin card to uh, go around the back of the laptop starting off. There's a various uh, series of clips you press in there to uh, just press them down and the back will come away and then work along the sides and uh, the sides would come off uh, as well. There you go, let's take it off gently. And you can see the vents there. 
So once you're inside, you can uh, quite clearly see all the components and it's very easy to uh, upgrade the parts, which is great. Kudos to uh, Asus for doing that. So we've got the uh, two fans for the GPU and the uh, CPU and the heat sinks to keep everything cool. Um, you can uh, also look at the uh, RAM slots. Uh, there's uh, two slots for the RAM. The SSD is easily replaceable. It's an M.2 format. The battery is a 62 kilowatt hour battery and seems to be easily replaceable. And to the left, we have the regular spinning hard drive. The ambient sound is around about uh, 30 decibels. At idle, you can't uh, notice much difference, so very quiet. And under full load, it's about 43 decibels. The fans just producing a low whirring sound. The speakers while gaming certainly drown out any fan noise. They're not overly loud or fill a small room, but they're okay. So looking at battery life, um, at idle with the screen brightness at 25% and uh, streaming uh, YouTube video via Wi-Fi, the max we got was three hours, which, you know, I suppose for a, uh, a computer without uh, Optimus support, and everything running on the uh, dedicated GPU, that's not too bad, I suppose. Um, Gaming-wise, it um, conked out after about 50 minutes, so that's not too long there. So you certainly need to be near a power source if you're going to be doing any gaming. The variable frame rate of a graphics card clashes with the fixed um, refresh rate of a monitor. This produces tearing. So G-Sync uh, goes some way to uh, solving this issue. G-Sync requires a compatible monitor and the driver forces the uh, display rate of the monitor to match that of the variable frame rate produced by the graphics card, eliminating tearing and no stuttering. V-Sync on the other hand produces stuttering as the uh, frame rate dips below the screen's refresh rate, uh, producing possibly 30-15 frames a second. And this could be perceived as stutter in gameplay. So here we have uh, Grand Theft Auto 5 at max settings. Uh, G-Sync on the left and uh, V-Sync uh, on the right. Just to see if you can notice any uh, perceivable difference. Um, certainly both uh, don't exhibit uh, any tearing. But uh, do you see any stuttering in the, uh, the V-Sync one? I think you need sharp eyes. But uh, I could give you an idea on the difference. All right, so we've been running this uh, Rainbow Six Siege for for a good 45 minutes. So let's see what the temperatures are looking like. You can see there, it's about, it's pointing at the keyboard, 43. That's to the center, to the left, it's cooler, 40, 31. Number pad, about 27. And the touchpad, about 27, 26, 27. So certainly to the center of the keyboard there, that's uh, about 43 degrees, this isn't Celsius. Let's have a look at the bottom of the case. Where your leg, it'll be on your lap. That's not bad, see, it's quite cool. That is good for being on your leg, it's 36. Of course, towards the back end where all the heat pipes are, it's 44, 42, and to the front it's even cooler still, so I think that's uh, not bad at all. You've been playing for about, what, 45 minutes as I say, and if you click on the battery, it's uh, 97%, not charging. And I've noticed that before that it uh, it uh, drops. It's as if the power is using too much power for the uh, for the power brick. Under load, the uh, 180 watt power supply measures around about 45 degrees Celsius. That's okay. This power supply is fairly small. Here it is in comparison to a mouse. Um, so this plus a laptop uh, makes quite a small uh, lightweight package. So I'm uh, running uh, the uh, Heaven benchmark here um, for a while now. Say about. Uh, an hour um, just to see how the uh, you know how the uh, the temperature on the uh, GPU and CPU fare now Asus to uh, install a gaming uh, 
uh, center utility which uh, you can uh, use by pressing a key on the keyboard and uh, that uh, brings up and it uh, shows you um, well first off it shows you all your, your frequencies and um, your GPU frequency frequency it's interesting the uh, the 1070 is supposed to have a boost of 1645 um, but it uh, it does boost up there occasionally above that I've seen it up to uh, 1700 um, so uh, that, that's pretty good um, I don't see uh, that much in the way of uh, in, in throttling the the base clock is 1443 so it's uh, certainly keeping up uh, within the uh, the parameters and uh, the memory it shows you the memory clock um, the uh, CPU uh, frequency so that's uh, that's running pretty much up to uh, up to snuff there as well um, the CPU uh, temperature um, is uh, 82 so that's getting uh, getting a little bit uh, a little bit toasty uh, the GPU temperature is fine though 79 I think that's uh, perfectly acceptable you can create uh, various uh, profiles as well which is nice you can uh, free up RAM by uh, clicking on uh, on here you can free up RAM free up memory clicking on there you can change um, uh, the, sp the screen settings as so you've got to uh, like splendid um, so you got uh, the splendid technology you can go to like normal um, I care so it makes it a little bit more bluer but it's not, it's not working so well when it's uh, playing a game um, vivid and change the manual so you can basically change how the screen uh, looks by clicking across those you got the uh, audio wizard um, you can change the sound you can have uh, it just it changes it slightly I, I've got the soundscape going because that's uh, seemed to uh, make it sound a bit better but uh, you can disable the uh, Windows key and you can also disable uh, this uh, Republic of Gamers key which is on the keyboard um, so that's uh, and uh, disable the, the touchpad so now the bit you've been waiting for benchmarks first up is the Atto disk benchmark on the left we have the 7200 rpm mechanical drive and on the right we have that uh, SSD and look at the speed of that it's fantastic Right, very high, it's pretty much everything. Shadow quality, very high. Let's face it, we're spending uh, this amount of money on a laptop, we want everything to be freaking very high. Alright, everything is maxed out there. So this was the uh, benchmark with the uh, V-Sync off and G-Sync off. That's running great, isn't it? Eh? It's not uh, dipping uh, below 50, really, like as far as I can see. This is a game where G-Sync will come into its own. I mean, if you do get those dips, they'll iron it all out. It just shows there's enough horsepower to power this game at everything maxed out. In fact, you know, the graphics card in this is probably overpowered for 1080p. But you can hook it up to a external monitor. So quickly looking at the effect of playing on battery power, doing the same type of scene. This is with uh, V-Sync on, and uh, we're pretty much at the uh, the 30 mark. So be aware that uh, gaming on battery power, your frame rate could actually halve. So Doom with everything maxed out.
take your time. Very high, 16 uh, times uh, anisotropic uh, filtering there. Again, high. Everything uh, as maxed out as you can get. Even the uh, the multi sampling is maxed out. So this is the you can't get any higher. GTX 10 series graphics cards are touted as being VR ready so let's put it to the test with raw data which must be the most graphically intensive VR game I know. The laptop played it perfectly, there was no jittering, no stuttering, it uh, was just as if I was playing on my uh, GTX 980 Ti on my desktop. Fantastic! Well I hope you enjoyed uh, my videos there. So to conclude on this uh, ASUS uh, GL502VS-DB71 laptop, what I like about it, it's lightweight. I do like that. It's quite a solid build. Plastic, granted, but that gives, gives it its lightweight. But it's quite a solid build. It's well made. I also like it's very easy to take the back off and replace or upgrade hardware in there. So you can upgrade the uh, hard drives, increase the uh, the RAM. Fantastic. And uh, kudos to, the, to ASUS for that. Unlike MSI where they put that scary break the warranty label on there. Asus don't do that. So what else do I like? It's a beast. It powers games, phew, no problem. In fact, 1080p is too, too weak a panel for it really. It's geared up for more like 1440p. But you can ex uh, attach it to uh, external monitors. You've got the HDMI 2.0 uh, port there. Um, you know, you can power for, uh, do 4K gaming at uh, 60 frames per second if the game can uh, if it can handle that uh, resolution of course um, another great benefit is the g-sync and for this price point of sixteen hundred dollars having a g-sync capable monitor is fantastic that's uh, certainly a premium there so that's definitely worth having uh, what i wasn't uh, too keen on was the, uh, the the battery life maximum of three hours power saver mode that's, I mean, it's fine. It's a gaming notebook, what do you expect? But, you know, people like myself are, who uh, travel a lot and, and benefit the lightweight, the battery life doesn't uh, support it. Because, of course, you don't have uh, G-Sync and uh, Optimus at the same time, unfortunately, which um, is a shame. Hopefully, NVIDIA will issue a fix for that. Uh, what I also wasn't too keen on um, was the fact that the, the battery um, would be uh, discharging while gaming. That was a bit of a concern to me. I don't think the uh, the power supply is uh, uh, delivering sufficient wattage to the laptop. So, but that aside, I had no hiccups, didn't freeze, didn't stutter. It just kept plowing through the games, and uh, I think it's a definite recommended buy. So, thank you, and see you next time.